Hi everyone. Today we're going to go through how you can model a parapet capping in Revit. Um, so we're going to go through two methodologies and what we're going to do first is I'm going to talk primarily about how you can create the profile in such a way that it has parametric functions so you can change within the Revit Logic model the, the live values rather than using something like an in-place profile which would involve you every time recreating that in place family when you needed it in a project okay um so what we're going to do is we're going to create the parametric pro profile first and then what we're going to do is i'll show you a how to produce the, the the sweep so that you can apply the profile to it and present it the way i have and then i'm going to show you a second way which is how you can apply the profile to the top of your wall construction assembly so that every time you draw a wall that profile is automatically in place that that parapet capping um, that is more conducive to the likes of CMU construction, blockwork, brickwork, that kind of thing. But uh, it, it does, I can show you the context here where it'll, it'll, it'll show the functionality of it. Um, so look, as always, I'm Niall, this is 20 bim If you like this content, you know what to do down below. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, all that good stuff. Uh, the first link there in the description is the download for the parametric profile family itself. And it's actually free for all 20 bim members. So you go and avail of that if you wish. And um, also I have a Discord community link, which is down in the description as well, which is just like-minded AEC professionals um, who want to talk things about BIM, Revit, ask each other questions, run things with one another, how to approach certain topics and stuff. So you're all more than welcome to join that. It's an open it's an open forum there and uh, just go ahead and join it and, you know, send me an old message and I'll say hi. Okay, so look, I won't delay any more. We're going to sit down and we're going to get straight into this now. So the first step in all of this is to create the actual profile family itself. Okay, so we'll go through that from start to finish. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the existing capping and I'm going to delete it. Okay, and then going to file, we're going to go to new family. And in this instance, I'm going to select the metric profile. Okay, and um, if you're Imperial, obviously you're selecting the Imperial profile. Pressing open. Okay, and you can see that what we have here is our origin point, our two reference planes that belong to the origin. I'm just going to temporarily unpin them, pressing UP, and I'm just going to uh, extend the um, the overall line length for them, okay? And then I'm just going to press PN again, just to pin them to make sure our origin doesn't change, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, to begin with, I'm gonna set the family category and parameters here, and on the drop down under profile usage, I'm going to scroll down and I'm gonna select wall sweep. And this is just informing Revit of the type of function that this profile belongs to, okay? So we're gonna press OK. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to create our reference planes. And our reference planes will be the mechanism by which the parametric function of the family is controlled. So what we do first is we create our reference planes and then we create our dimensions when and, and apply the labels to the dimensions which will drive the type properties, okay? The type properties can be edited within the live Revit project and if we draft our profile associated correctly to our reference planes, it will allow us then to change those type properties and the family will expand and contract and change the, the overall setting out in conjunction with what we need on a per project basis, okay? So starting off with the reference planes, I'm going to press RP to start creating our reference plane. And I'm going to create a total of six horizontal and four vertical in this instance, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna produce two horizontal above our uh, our original um, reference plane, and I'm gonna create three below, okay? And again, on the vertical, I'm just going to set one at about 400 mil, let's say, in the vertical there. And then I'm just gonna set two, maybe about 100 mil off that. Excellent. So straight away, we have created all the reference planes that we're going to need for this. Now, if you wish, if you want for a um, better understanding of what you are editing and the relationship between the reference planes and the geometry itself, you can name these if you wish. Um, for the sake of the, the length of this tutorial, I'm not gonna name each one of these, but note that in the family I provide, I actually have a naming convention against these reference planes so that you can uh, you could just understand the association of the reference planes to the geometry itself and the, uh, the the labels okay so now that we've created our reference planes the next thing we have to do is to actually dimension them out and apply our type property labels to it okay so 
Forgive me if I'm looking off screen. I have a sample one here that I produced just before this video, just to guarantee it works before I embarrass myself. <laughs> so pressing DI for dimension, okay. I'm going to dimension from here to here and from here to here. I'm also going to dimension from here to here, here to here, and between these and between these. I think I made this one here. Actually, I want to go to that line there, yeah. Um, and overall with overall height, boom, 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 boom. yeah. I think I think that'll be enough to start. Okay. So what have I done? Okay, I've just taken some rudimentary dimensions. Okay, but there's more function to these than than appears. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this one, and this one's gonna be our our total wall width. So from the rising internal uh, face of the parapet wall to the external face of the parapet wall is our total parapet width. And this dimension is gonna drive that for the family, okay? So up here, I'm gonna press um, create label. So select a dimension up here. And then you can see it's a family parameter. It's set to type automatically and it's set to dimensions automatically because we selected dimension before we pressed the button here, okay? So this is exactly the type of parameter we want to create. So in this instance, I'm gonna call it parapet width i'm going to press okay all right then this one here is going to be the outer face offset so there's a triangulation on the outside face of the parapet normally so i'm going to give an, a value for that so it moves in and out relative to the wall okay so again i'm going to go up i'm going to say create parameter and i'm going to call this outer outer limit okay and then this one here again i'm going to create a parameter and this one here is going to be um, height above wall front. And this one here, on the reverse side, I'm going to create another one. And it's going to be height ugh, wall. Apologies for typos and spelling errors and stuff. Um, you know, it's... <laughs> uh, a, I can't see the keyboard, but B, um, you know yourself, you're... As soon as someone's watching it, it goes to crap. Uh, so capping front height, okay? So this is gonna be our offset height for the bottom of the, the capping, not the actual fixing bottom, but the underside of the return on the capping, okay? Uh, so here, again, I'm gonna create um, a label, and this one is going to be capping front depth, let's say. And then at the back, this is gonna be the opposite for the inverse, okay? So this is going to be capping rear depth. Okay, so now that we've loosely created both our um, driving type properties and our um, reference planes that they're associated to, we can start to actually flesh this out a little bit more detailed, okay? Um, there are one or two more considerations we're gonna make in terms of implying the dimensions, but we're gonna do that after we create our profile. So now we're gonna create our profile and associate it to the reference planes so that when we change our type property values, the profile and the, ref the reference planes will expand and the profiles will move alongside them, okay? So in order to start creating our profile, we want to go to either create and press line, or we're gonna press LI on the keyboard, LI, and we're in the line tool, okay? And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give an offset value of two mil, because I want an offset value of two mil for just the back face here, okay? And I'm going to go from this intersection here to this intersection here, okay? And then I'm gonna turn off my offset value. I'm gonna put that to zero. And I'm gonna grow that out to this junction. And then back down to this intersection. Returning here. And here I'm gonna go down to 98. Okay. And then I'm gonna return 40 below. This is just your, um, your fixing plate, let's say that you'll fix directly in, and then up here, and then I'm gonna select um, 40 there. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just link in with that, sorry, apologies. I'll just make sure it joins to the intersection, okay? So now we've kind of got the outside face of our profile, but now we need to create, create our inside face. So uh, I'm gonna press LI, and I'm going to just draw to that intersection there, and then I'm going to use the offset command, okay? So we could type OF or press offset from the modify tools. And again, we're going to say two mil and we're going to press copy. And we're just going to select on the inside face of those lines to offset internally two millimeters. Okay. And then using the trim command, T or, okay, 
we can trim out any of those inside elements that didn't automatically trim and the rest all appear to be good. Okay, great. So now you can see, although it's quite disproportional, <laughs> disproportionate, you can see that we have um, the first pass of the overall profile shape for the capping, okay? And don't worry about it looking odd at the moment because what we're going to do is we're going to change the driving type parameters and these reference planes will flex accordingly and the geometry associated will then flex accordingly, okay? So now that we've set this up, what we want to do is I'm going to create just a few more dimensions just to close out and kind of lock all the constraints in that we need. And the first one of those is going to be our profile thickness. So I'm going to press DI and from the reference plane to the outside face of the, um, the profile geometry, I'm going to set a dimension, okay? And similarly, I'm going to do that throughout where possible. If there's no reference plane, that's fine. Just go between the lines like we have here. Because the corner intersections are being pushed and pulled with the intersection of the, the reference planes. So if this line moves out, as long as we lock the two diagonals parallel to one another, the whole thing will tilt accordingly. Okay, again, between the two lines here, and then reference plane to this line here, okay? And what I'm gonna do again is create a new parameter. So I'm gonna select a dimension and go up to create parameter. And under parameter, I'm gonna call this profile THK for thickness, okay? And I'm gonna press okay. And then I'm gonna select our other dimensions accordingly. And I'm going to apply them to the same, same I'm gonna apply the same parameter to them as well, okay? So profile thickness, okay? I'm just going to increase the scale there so that's a little bit more legible. And now, hopefully, I should be able to start shifting around some of these values, okay? Um, I'm finally, I'm also going to give a, a dimension here and I'm going to create a parameter for this and this is going to be um, fixing plate value, okay? Or um, I'll give this depth, okay? And again, if that moves, the bottom of the fixing plate should move as well because I've created that value and that's a, that's a, that's a value-driven parameter, okay? Um, and finally, I'm just going to introduce just a couple more dimensions just to neaten out the, 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 pro, the, the, um, the pr proportions of the profile, okay? So here I've created a dimension between um, the top and the bottom and this mid intersection. And I'm just going to press the EQ on the dimension to uh, make that equidistant, okay? That means if the top or the bottom are to alter, that'll always be an equidistant value, okay? And similarly, again, I'm gonna do the same here with the outer limit to the inside wall face. Um, and when I select the midline there, which I should have done in the first instance, I'm gonna press EQ. And again, as one flexes, the other should flex accordingly, okay? Um, so now we've pretty much created our full profile. And what I wanna do is just make a couple of edits or just flex it within the family so that we can understand that the profile is fully functional. It's a really good rule of thumb when you're developing families in Revit that you constantly, <coughs> in Revit, <laughs> that you constantly flex the profile. Um, if you don't flex the profile within the family, you can pretty much guarantee by the time you take it into the project, it's going to break. It's not gonna work the way you want it to work, okay? So, um, sorry, it cut out me there previously. Um, looking at the screen here, okay, um, I just noticed as well that we've actually lost the association here relative to our um, our reference plane. And this is a good example of the value of actually flexing your families, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to repair this now, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to peel back both this and this, okay? And I'm just going to make sure that they connect accordingly and locked them to our intersection there, okay? So if it's not picking up the intersection, you can type in SI as a shortcut. It means select intersection and it'll highlight that and then you can lock it, okay? Dimension would over constrain the sketch. Don't worry about that then. It's, it's got the connection for the moment, okay? So we still have our profile tick here. Now, what we do have is a, a problem. I'm gonna remove that profile tick there, okay? And we need to associate this, this inside to this intersection there, okay? So again, I'm going to reduce these and I'm going to actually end up breaking um, part of this up here and you'll see why now in a second, okay? 
So when I do this, I'm going to lock that, okay? And again then, I'm gonna bring this up and connect to the bottom there, okay? That's fine. And finally, because we've selected this and um, we've, we, we have to, we've got reverse corners basically joining to the intersections. We have the inside corner here, but the outside corner there. What I need to do is I need to migrate this down until it says it's parallel as such. Then I need to trim, okay? And then what we need to do is we need to introduce our profile thickness again up here, okay? So I'm gonna press DI. I'm going to dimension it. I'm gonna select a dimension. And on the drop down, I'm gonna select profile thickness, okay? And then we should be able to flex these accordingly. You can see that our top offset above the wall is working correctly and our rear offset above the wall is working correctly. So now we know that this family is 100% functional and that we can bring it into our live project, okay? So what I'm gonna do very quickly is just give it a neaten up um, before we do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the parapet width and I'm gonna give it a more reasonable value. I think we're going to give it maybe 600, okay? Um, our height above the wall, uh, maybe I'll, I'll leave all these for the moment. I think the rest of it's looking fairly neat at this point. Um, our depth at the back is maybe a bit excessive, so I'm gonna give that 150. And there we have it. We've fully completed our parametric profile within the, um, well, for, for the Reva project, okay? And the next step now will be to bring us into the live Reva project and to implement it in whatever modeling methodology we're going to use the profile for, okay? So give me one moment and we'll be back to do that. So now that we've completed our parametric profile family, the next thing to do is to bring it into the Revit project, okay? And we can do that very simply. So the first thing we want to do is press File, Save As. We're going to save the family as, um, in this instance, parapet capping profile parametric. And um, please use a better naming convention than that. I'm going to press Save, okay? And then we're just going to load into project. So now that we've loaded that into the project, what we need to do is actually figure out how we're going to place it within the live environment, okay? And there's a couple of ways to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, as you can see, I've already got this um, insulation profile for our, um, our parapet capping in place. I'm just going to hide that for the moment so it doesn't confuse matters, okay? And our intersection point for our family, if you remember correctly, was this internal line here, okay? So we had our initial crosshairs, and this was the internal line for that, okay? So what we're going to do under architecture, we're gonna to go to component and we're gonna say model in place. Now this is the first method I'm gonna show you of how to place this, okay? And in here, we can scroll down. In this instance, I'm gonna select it as a wall category because it's a parapet capping on the top of the wall. So I'm just gonna press okay. And here we're gonna call it parapet capping profile. Capping, uh, oh sorry, flashing even we'll call it, okay? And one, then once we've named it, we get this selection criteria in the um, contextual tab, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna press solid sweep, okay? So when we select solid sweep, we have two options. We have sketch path or pick path. In this instance, because we're in the 3D view, we can actually pick the path for the boundary walls all the way around. So we can actually do this and it's probably easier to do it in 3D view than it is actually in the 2D view, okay? So we're gonna select pick path, okay? And here it has highlighted pick 3D edges automatically. And what we can do is we can just pick the inside face of our walls, of the parapet rising wall, all the way around, as such, okay? And then we're just gonna to have to use the trim extend command or TR we just need to go around and make sure that we're trimming that all out so that it is one continuous enclosed loop and not a series of broken lines because otherwise it won't finish the sweep for us, okay? So that should be it there, okay? And then we can press the green tick to finish, okay? So now that we've done that, on the profile drop down here, we can simply navigate to our parapet capping profile parametric, okay? Um, or whatever name that we've named it, okay? I'm gonna press okay there. And you can see that the orientation is inverted, okay? And that's no problem because with the profiles, we can simply select flip, and you can see that it's going to extrude it in the opposite direction, okay? I'm gonna press to finish the edit mode. And now we have positioned our full parapet capping all the way around, okay? So I'm just gonna reveal hidden for a, mo for a moment, or H. 
Okay, I have to finish the mode, apologies. Um, so I'm going to press R H. I'm just going to bring my section box back. And I'm just going to cut through this view here. I'm going to press R H again. Okay. And just for clarity's perspective, I'm going to actually unhide our our uh, insulation there. And as you can see, we don't have the correct offset values for this profile yet. Our, our it's 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 free off the face of the off the wall. So even though it's aligned to the back of the wall correctly, it's free off the face of the wall. Okay, and that obviously is not going to suffice for our needs. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we're going to actually use the profile parametric function um, within the Revit model to update the setting out of this. Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick dimension here in 3D space from the outside of the inside of the wall, and that value is 527. So our overall width of the parapet is exactly 527 mil, so we need to drive that with our par parameter uh, value within the profile, okay? So, scrolling down all the way to our profile families here, okay, you can see that I have parapet capping profile parametric. If you expand that and you double click, you will be brought into the, 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 the menu with all the values of the dimension driven parameters that we created in the family, okay? so. What we can do in this instance is we can say, okay, we want to change our parapet front depth, okay, for the, the main part of it to 250. We want our rear capping depth to remain 150. You can see in this instance that our insulation value and our um, capping are, are clashing, okay? So what we want to do is we actually want to increase the rear wall height for that, okay? So I'm going to set that at 150 and I'm going to put our front wall height at 170 just so we have a correct fall at the back. And then on our overall power put, which we're going to select 527, okay? And in this instance, I'm just going to quickly press OK. And you can see the way it automatically changed. Now, I probably over-egged that a little bit, no doubt. So we're going to come back here and we're going to reduce that capping rear depth to 125. And I'm going to reduce this to 150 on the front. I'm going to press OK. And you can see that it's starting to make a little bit more sense in terms of what our setting out is for the... Uh, the capping profile throughout and this is this is excellent if you can get into a habit of doing this with all of your profile families rather than using in place profiles when you're doing a sweep like this it means that you just get a greater control and you have the family indefinitely you don't have to continuously create a new profile on a per project basis and then manually edit it every time you have to make a change so this is the ideal way of doing it okay so pressing ok we have now created our parapet capping profile that has been extruded all the way around. So we actually have our, our flashing profile for the building, okay? Um, there is another way of doing this, and I'm just gonna show you very kind of high end. It's not suited to this type of construction, but generally it's a little bit more suited to a an overall wall construction assembly that would be made up of CMU units, let's say. So let's say you've got your internal leaf, your insulation, your air barrier, and your external leaf all as one wall family you may want to apply within the construction assembly a, a profile to the top of that okay so selecting the um the inside wall here okay i'm going to delete the the extrusion that we've made the, the sweep that we've made and selecting the inside wall here i'm going to press edit type and on the structure assembly i'm going to come in here and what we're going to do is we're going to preview this and we're going to change it to section and when we change it to section you'll see that we'll get the modify vertical structure elements open up to us. And we have sweeps here on the right hand side. So we can select sweeps, okay? And we can add a sweep here. For our profile, we can scroll down and we can pay our parametric profile, okay? I can change the family, the, the material for this to aluminium or something. So aluminium, aluminum, depending on what part of the world you're from, pressing okay. And we can give this a top value, okay? And we can just press apply initially. And you can see, okay, we're actually off our alignment there. So when I press okay, okay, you can see that we need to return this by a known value, okay? So again, we can go back into our, our family, okay? We can go into our preview, sorry. Ooh. Our section. Sorry, <laughs> I missed a step. We have to go into the construction, the assembly build up, okay? And we can go back into our sweeps here and we can give it an offset value, okay? So in this instance, I'm gonna try to give it an offset of negative 100 and I'm going to press apply. 
and then I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to press OK again and apply that. And you can see now that our profile has located exactly where we want it. And the great thing about that is if you're using a unified wall for all the leaves of your assemblies, it's not very easy in this con context because you only have the internal parapet wall rising to a height. Um, you can actually just very quickly, every time you draw that wall, you're going to actually be able to create that. So I can go to wall here and I can go down to our um, internal parapet wall. And by merely drawing that there, if I've lost in 3D space, I think I have. <laughs> uh, just let me expand the tight to that. You can see that I automatically have that profile on top of the wall. Okay, so that is, that's basically it. That are, that's the way to create a, a parapet capping in, in Revit um, using two methodologies. Um, for this type of construction, I prefer the sweep because I can lock the sweep to the inside face of the, uh, the parapet. And as the parapet internal wall moves, the whole thing will move back and forth accordingly. Um, or again, you can apply it as a sweep to the top of your wall construction assembly so that every time you create that wall, you're creating the, the parapet uh, profile automatically on top of it. Okay, so as ever, I'm Niall. This is 8020BIM. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, all the links down below if you want this model or what, what have you. Please make sure to, to go ahead and join the Discord as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. I appreciate the support, continued support and um, I hope you got value from this. Okay, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.